Dr. Remy has been a doctor attached to the TREG since 1997. She told TV6 she intends to continue her private practice as a pediatrician. Her resignation has come only one day after three doctors were suspended by the TREG board and the PSA president Watson Duke says he intends to defend the doctors, including Dr. Victor Wheeler. Dr. Wheeler in particular is a very good doctor. He has saved many, many mothers in this hospital. I know that for a fact. He has performed excellent surgery. Many of the doctors here are under the gun. The THE were instructed to suspend somebody to satisfy the hunger of a crying public. Duke said he wishes the investigation into the maternal death of Rose Gordon to be free of any political bias. And let the inquiry take place, let it be free from political interference, and let the chips fall as it may, but we will defend the doctors. Dr. Wheeler declined to comment, but TV6 understands Dr. Wheeler is eagerly awaiting the outcome of the TRHA's investigation. PSA President Watson Duke is also related to Rose Gordon. He stressed Dr. Wheeler has been targeted by the present administration and he has the evidence to prove this. He said his suspension is nothing short of character assassination. He said there should be no witch hunt in this case. The family deserve answers. The public deserve answers also too. But we must be very careful as to how we go about this. Duke was at the time speaking at the Scarborough General Hospital, calling for the back pay of workers. He also announced a hunger march on February 1st in Tobago. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. All right, it's 29 minutes before 7 o'clock and we have attorney Mr. Martin George here with us to discuss this maternal mortality situation. So welcome to hey, Morning Edition. Good morning to you. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. And it's a pleasure to be here. All the best to you and yours for 2016. Thank you. The very same to you. Yes. Um, this unfortunate um, situation that's happening within our public health uh, system, is it that the maternal mortality rates in Trinidad and Tobago are climbing? Well, the thing is, the evidence shows that there is a systemic institution failure and it's not just at the TRHA there are other RHAs throughout the country mm -hmm. where you have the problem in fact you saw recently the Prime Minister set up a committee to look at the functioning of the regional health authorities because it's a model that is actually not working the way it was envisioned so mm -hmm. that committee is headed by Mr. Welch and I think there are other members on the committee so I think it, there's a recognition that we need to fix the broad model. Even in Parliament, you had um, debate mentioning the RHAs and how they were functioning. You had independent senators giving their contributions on the matter. So therefore, we've recognized that there is an institutional failure. So having recognized that, what are the steps we are taking to fix it? The TRHA in particular is where I think we should start. Mm -hmm. Because, first of all, we need to understand as a nation that the TRHA is different from all other regional health authorities. The Tobago Regional Health Authority has been excised out of the direct control and supervision of the Minister of Health. So, there's no direct line control for the Tobago Regional Health Authority. They have been functioning as an entity unto themselves, a law unto themselves for years. And that is the fundamental problem with the Tobago Regional Health Authority. You're talking a legislative issue whereby they were taken out and put under the control of the THA. Yes. The problem with this is that within the Ministry of Health, you have several medical you have several legal persons who are public servants who are part of the institutional framework of checks and balances. Mm -hmm. So if it, you have situations where a, an RHA, say in Trinidad, makes a demand for ABC, then you have several persons who could check, verify, vet, you know, um, question, send it back and say, no, you, you haven't. Unfortunately, with the TRHA, you have no such checks and balances. You have the TRHA, you have the THA above it. But so, then the THA then is responsible for monitoring the performance of the TRHA. Good. And within the THA 
ask yourself, where is that institutional structure? Where is that cadre of professionals who can carry out this oversight function? There are none. You look even the, the Secretary for Health in Tobago. She's not a medical legal professional. She doesn't have that capacity. Within the structure of the THA, they don't have that capacity. However, they do bear the responsibility. And that's the problem here. In but, other words, you've been charged with the power, so therefore you must take responsibility. The question remains, in terms of conducting quality audits within the, 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 the TRHA, it's a, it's a matter of numbers. Is it that we're seeing an increased frequency of C-sections being done? Is it that we're seeing an increased um, uh, uh, maternal mortality rate? But these are hard numbers. These are right. things that you yes. manage via the, the, the performance and the statistics that emerge from the, from the institution. Right. And with the TRHA, we are seeing an increase. And I'll tell you why I say that the THA has to take responsibility. And I, I make no, um, you know, no apologies for saying the blood of Rose Gordon is on the hands of the THA, which is led by Mr. Orville London. Because in 2014, there was the death of Licia Shepard and her baby and Johnny Shepard at the THA. As a result of the agitation that resulted, mm -hmm. they were forced to have a, an inquiry. A team, a high-powered team led by Dr. Albert Passard, was commissioned to produce a report. They had a full investigation. Yes. Our client participated in what, the investigation. What recommendations came out of that report? Well, I would like you to ask Mr. Orville London, because the THA has since buried and hidden that report. Had they made that report public and had we gone on some, you know, exercise to say, well, look, these are the problems. Let us try to fix it. Rose Gordon may have been alive. So that's why I say the THA is responsible, solely responsible. So today I would like to call upon the Prime Minister, who is also from Tobago, Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, ask Mr. Orbe London, produce that report. It's a massive report from what I understand, but the THA has refused to reveal it. The TRHA is hiding the report also. So instead of addressing the problems and fixing it going forward, we will see many more instances like this occurring because they are refusing to confront the problem and deal with the findings of that report. They have not made it public. You've taken public monies, paid for the report, paid all these professionals, a high-powered team. They took months. They prepared a massive report. And then you bury that report. You refuse to make it public. Is that what the people of Tobago deserve? But you know, Mr. George, this is not the first time that we have conducted um, um, in inquiries into the, the state of the, of the public health system. You're quite right. Tobago. In fact, as far back as 2007, there was the Commission of Inquiry into the Health Sector, led by then um, Mrs. Gladys Gafu. And in fact, in her findings in 2007, and this is why I tell you the THA cannot escape responsibility here. In her findings for that Commission of Inquiry in 2007, Mrs. Gladys Gafu, chairman of that Commission of Inquiry into the Health Sector, said specifically with respect to the TRHA, the Tobago Regional Health Authority, that they have not cooperated, they have refused to produce documents, they have refused to answer questions, they have been acting as a rogue entity for years. So I would like to see, let's move this beyond the personalities and let's mm -hmm. look at the institution. The institution of the THA is not working. Mm -hmm. The THA, which is responsible for it, is not carrying out its oversight function. And instead of oversight, they are instead hiding the evidence. Let them bring forth that report. Let us save lives. Let us move forward in a way where we can move, um, know what went wrong and then take steps to fix it. Hiding the evidence is not going to work. But could it be that the THA may in fact be attempting to limit its liability in these circumstances as far as that report is concerned? Well, the point is, if you're looking at the question of limiting your liability, it's not going to work because the point is more and more deaths are going to occur and more and more people are going to take legal action because the people of Trinidad and Tobago generally are recognizing that, look, they do have rights in these circumstances. We have formed the Medical Complaints Council and Advisory Board. We are compiling data. We are looking to work with international 
international organizations. We are looking to partner with the World Health Organization, the Pan American Health Organization, because we feel that public health care standards need to be raised in Trinidad and Tobago. And the only way you raise it and do better is not by hiding the results, hiding the evidence. Let us know what the problem is so then we can begin to fix it. Let's, you know, get the data. Let's see what the hard numbers are. Let's see where the problems are. And then you begin to address it. It's not by, you know, pretending and hiding and burying your heads in the sand. But I, I note with the, in, in recent um, days, uh, the director of medicine on the TRHA board, uh, Dr. Maria Dillon Remy, actually resigned with immediate effect. Um, and is, is, that a, is that an indication, a further indication of, of the kind of governance problems that are taking I, place? I think it is a clear and direct indication to that. And let me tell you, Dr. Remy is a consummate professional. So I think she had reached her limit of her tenure with the TRHA board. And the TRHA is the problem here. The TRHA is the problem. While it would appear that they were trying to point fingers at individuals, their institution is what is broken. That is what needs to be fixed. But of course, the most of them will not take the principal stand that Dr. Remy took and say, listen, I refuse to be a part of this anymore. You look at an organization that has changed so many CEOs. Look at how many CEOs they have changed. Brent Murphy, you had George Bell, you had um, Paula Chester Cumberbatch. I mean, there's a whole long line. You had Godwin Richardson. And this is over what time frame? Within the last five or six years, they've changed several CEOs. And it's all because you've had many cases where you might have had persons who stand on principle and say, listen, I am not willing to do that, which the board has instructed me to do. And as a result, the board usually takes the stance that, okay, I'm going to dismiss you. So in other words, they don't want robust, independent professionals to give their opinions and advice and guidance. No, they want people who can simply go along with the broken model with all the things that are going wrong and you simply rubber stamp them the minute no, you stand up to it you are but, you know, but that could not be an acceptable way to manage a public health system. I mean, if this is to the detriment of the people of Tobago, then something certainly has to be done by, by the so-called powers that be. And this is why I'm making the call. So I'm saying, if it is that Mr. Orwell London refuses to release that report from last year, the investigation that was triggered by the death of Licia Shepard and her baby Anjani Shepard, I'm asking the Prime Minister, Dr. Rowley, as the political leader, as you know, the leader in government, as the Prime Minister, call upon Mr. London today. Make that call. Pick up the phone, call him, say, Mr. London, please release that report for the benefit of not just Tobagonians, for Trinidad and Tobago, because as I say, it's a reflection on the RHA model nationally. But we can look at this report, look at the refinings in this report, and then let us all begin to have open, transparent discussions on where we went wrong and let us move forward. It's not a question of pointing fingers and laying blame. Let us move beyond that and recognize that, look, there is a bigger issue at stake here, which is the standard of public health care for a country which has so many resources. We have so many talented doctors. This is the thing. Now, let me tell you, within the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago probably has the highest concentration of skilled surgeons physicians you know we have the talent here we have very brilliant very skilled very capable people but it's a question of institutional management that is the failure it's a question of systems how how what is your impression of uh, since the commissioning of the, of the Scarborough Hospital which is a relatively new um, facility, facility yes. in, in Tobago has, has the quality of healthcare in Tobago generally improved well I will tell you there have been some improvements and I, I have have no fear of saying so. There have been some improvements. In fact, there's been a de dedicated effort to improve customer service at the front line. Yes. And I think they've hired many more doctors. So therefore, you have improvements along the way. Yes. Where the problems persist is at the top, where you have a board that appears to have no sense of direction. There's no oversight control over that board. There's no reporting to any line minister. And you see, this is the problem. So they have been functioning as an entity on their own, even in terms of procurement issues. They could just simply write and say, we need this for 20 million, 30 million. There's no effective oversight. No, in but there terms must be, of the, the board must be operating within a particular annual budget. The board must be reporting right. to, the, to the Secretary when, of Health. When, the they, when, they, when they write to the Secretary of Health, what capacity does she have 
in terms of a medical, legal, financial basis but she to will challenge have, she it. She will have historical data. She would see what would, well, it, would have been right. spent in the years before. But and she not can just, compare and contrast. It's not just historical data because mm -hmm. if you are saying you need something new, then, but you, then you must need, justify it. Right. You but, must justify it. Right. And mm -hmm. how does she challenge it? This is what I'm saying. You look within the structure of the Tobago House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. There isn't that cadre of, you know, let me tell you, the, the civil servants have been the ones who basically have been the vanguards, particularly the senior civil servants, yes. against government or institutional excesses because yes. they know the systems, the procedures. You do not have that in terms of oversight. Look at the structure. You have the TRHA, you have the THE. Yes. The THA has its secretaries, it has its deputy chief secretary and the chief secretary. Yes. But in terms of that structure for that oversight, it's mm -hmm. not there. So they have been a rogue entity. The TRHA has been a rogue entity for years and we will see more maternal deaths occurring unless we fix the problem of the but institution. even if the THA needed assistance, technical assistance in ensuring that it was adequately managing the, the health system in Tobago, they can, they can obtain that assistance. They can hire external consultants and they can treat with it in that manner. Right. They can have advisors to the, to the Secretary of Health and so on right. and I, treat with the manner on that I basis. agree with you. And look at what happened when they hired external consultants and persons who flew in and sat for months were paid you know several you know thousands of dollars to produce a report when they get the report what does mr orville london do he buries the report he refuses to make it public and this is the instructions from the th's attorneys they have said in court that they are not making it public they've actually said so They've said they are not making it public. So imagine something, and exactly what you're saying, you get the consultants in, you get the specialists in, they have produced their report, they've done their work, they've done their investigation, they've made findings, recommendations, etc. You have a massive report there which can guide all of us. Yes. Guide Tobago, guide Trinidad and Tobago. In, mm -hmm. in other words, you have the chance to really show the way and say, listen, we are going to be the leaders here to take in front and say, let's fix the problem yes. and instead you bury the evidence. But even so, um, those public documents, uh, those documents should be public. They should the, be public. Um, <laughs> under the freedom in fact, of they the, are public documents uh, because yeah, the, it's paid the, for with public, public money. That's right, <laughs> the public pay for it. <laughs> under the Freedom of Information Act, can't, can't a request be made to obtain that, that information? Of course it can be made under the Freedom of Information Act. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you why this goes beyond the question of Freedom of Information Act. In the case of Chantal Williams versus the Tobago Regional Health Authority, Justice Frank C. Passad made the point and he said he decries and deplores the practice of public health institutions telling people you must make an application under the Freedom of Information Act to get medical reports and medical records. Mm -hmm. So you have a judicial pronouncement on the issue that don't tell me because for an ordinary citizen, every time you have to get medical re records to say go under the Freedom of Information Act, if, do you know if the institution refuses, you have to now file a high court action to get a court order simply to get the medical record. So that's what Justice Frank C. Passat addressed. He said, this is not acceptable in this country that you must be telling people go under the Freedom of Information Act. Look at that case of Chantal Williams versus Tobago Regional Health Authority. He made that pronouncement. So therefore, the THA has no excuse to tell people go under the Freedom of Information Act. You have a responsibility to Tobagonians. If the THA had made that report available since last year, I am sure we may have seen the possibility that Rose Gordon may have been alive today. So then under the circumstances and, and, and given the, the seriousness of the issue, um, where does the Minister of Health fit into all of this? Well, actually, he doesn't really have a direct supervisory role. So that no blame can be laid at the feet of the Minister of Health. He is totally excised from the operations because the THA is responsible. So that's why I keep saying Mr. Orville London must take ultimate responsibility mm -hmm. and the THA mm -hmm. has to take responsibility mm -hmm. for the death of Rose Gordon. Mr. George, we, ha we have to go, but uh, thank you for pleasure. jumping in and um, I hope we can get greater clarity on these matters and have a, a, a permanent solution to I, what's happening. I here. would hope so. Folks, we're going to take a break and come back uh, with a lot more Morning Edition, so go nowhere.